So bring us home today. We have Linus ASX code LNU, and they have a market cap of around 10 million. Linus is a global software as a service company headquartered in Australia with operations in London, New York, and Europe. Linus has invented and patented the video virtualization engine TM, which indexes, analyzes, and tags each frame in a conventional video file and tra transforms it into a fully searchable virtualized video. Presenting for the company today is Linus CEO, James Brennan. James, welcome back, my friend, to the Hidden Gems webinar. Thank you, Paul, and thank you, everyone, for sticking around this afternoon. Um, as Paul mentioned, Linus is a cloud-based video software company, uh, and we have a patented way of working with video that drives tremendous efficiencies and brand new capabilities for our customers. Uh, we combine video together with data, and through our patented algorithms, we then have a way to work with the video to search and to recompile video into an infinite number of variable streams. So we can manipulate data as simply as manipulating any other data source, which uh, to date has not been possible. Uh, so if we jump forward two slides, Paul. Um, the, the, the core technology has a number of different applications. Uh, we've tested it in, in markets from um, sports, news and entertainment, um, uh, security and defense, education. So there's multiple applications for the core technology. Uh, but from a business perspective, we're very focused in the near term on the sports market. And in that particular market, there's a huge opportunity because there is very large scale, high value video uh, that, that all of our customers have. So we're targeting sports leagues and federations, teams, broadcasters, uh, really anybody who is working with sports video. Uh, and there's these massive archives that, that largely go unused. So the, the industry is very focused on the live event and, and monetizing and, and maximizing the amount of revenue driven from the live event. We have the ability to utilize not only the live content, but also all of this you know, very valuable archive footage, uh, and then to utilize that archive uh, post the live event to maintain and drive that, that fan engagement. So pre the live event, we can create all sorts of amazing content for our customers using that content uh, for publishing to social media, to publishing to their website. We can augment the live event with amazing footage from historical archives. So let's say that there's an amazing action that happens in the game and they wanna pull up all the last times that that's happened our technology can very quickly find uh, previous times that those actions have occurred and bring those into the broadcast stream and then maintain that engagement post the live event with automated highlights uh, and just continuing to keep fans engaged between those live events and even between seasons. Uh, and this drives you know, great increases in engagement with that content. Fans are always looking for more and deeper content uh, from their favorite teams and players. Uh, this is then monetized through sponsorships, advertising, subscription revenue, uh, and the efficiencies that we can drive in, in the production and, and creation of this video uh, present significant cost savings for our customers as well. Basically, at the end of the day, we unleash the value in these amazing video archives, and we do that without interrupting their current infrastructure uh, and workflows in terms of producing that video. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so we, we, we do this in a number of ways. We have tools that enable their internal teams to, to tell richer stories and curate content, anything from, from the most recent all the way through you know, 50 to 100 years of, of archive footage. Uh, we put that directly in the hands of fans to let fans search through these amazing archives and to create and share their own video. And we do this incredibly efficiently. Um, and that's allowed us to um, bring on board a number of Lighthouse customers. We have customers around the world from um, the Premier League in, in the UK uh, to Cricket Australia here uh, locally. We've got New Zealand Rugby, the National Basketball League here in Australia, horse racing with racing.com. Uh, and most recently, we um, are working with IMG, who is one of the biggest sports video rights holders in the world. Um, and, and working with content from, from close to 20 sports uh, and over 50 federations. So we've had amazing success 
over the last 12 months in particular, really driving into this sports segment, uh, validating the capabilities of our product and really driving uh, new revenues. On to the next slide, Paul. Uh, so just to give some examples of, of what exactly our products do and the benefits that they're providing, um, the first tool is utilized by our customers, uh, again, from, from sports teams and leagues uh, all the way up through broadcasters. This is to access massive video archives and to create content out of this. The existing tools that they have today are very cumbersome, very difficult to actually find and utilize these amazing um, sports archives. Uh, so what we do is we have the ability to search very detailed metadata within all of those games and find very specific clips that they may want to use to create highlight videos uh, and to create amazing content. Uh, so we're working with Cricket Australia. They've got over 50 years of archive video footage that they can now search and find very specific 10, 20, 30 second segments that they can then combine into videos that they publish to their websites, social media, and mobile applications. Uh, and previous to using our technology, they were only able to put out a handful of videos every month because it was so time consuming and their fans are demanding more and more content. Uh, and with our tool, they're now able to put out dozens of videos every week. They're able to monetize those more significantly and roughly telling us that they're saving on average eight hours per video that they're creating. Uh, we have another customer here in Australia called Inverly Media. Uh, they produce amazing footage and content and programs for uh, Sansa Rugby and New Zealand Rugby, uh, and most recently New Zealand Rugby on their NZR Plus platform. They've started um, uh, presenting content that's produced by Inverly Media, kind of 20, 30 minute programs. And what used to take you know, a week or more and, and be very expensive to put out, they're now doing in just a day. Uh, so we're, again, providing a, a tremendous efficiencies and allowing them to put out much, much greater amounts of content that they can then monetize. Uh, jumping to the next use case, uh, we can then automate that even further where every game that happens, we can create automated highlight packages. So if you're a sports fan, you're probably used to watching mini matches, kind of three, five, or 10 minute uh, uh, highlight videos of uh, a particular match. Uh, those are typically done in, in more of a, a, a manual fashion. Uh, they'll get all the individual clips, they'll put those together and put those mini matches together. We're able to do that very, very quickly and to create multiple packages. So for Cricket Australia, for example, uh, we've defined five different packages with them. So after every game, we can put out a bowling highlight, a batting highlight, home team or away team highlights, five and 10 minute versions. Uh, and we can do that all instantly following the game. We do that in a matter of seconds. And the really critical thing is that we can actually do that for their entire archive. So they've now gone back into 50 years of footage and created uh, this amazing content and these, these highlight packages for every game in their history. Uh, so we have, you know, again, with the efficiencies and the speed of our platform, we're able to do that uh, in seconds versus probably months to put that content together. Uh, we've recently brought on board our first customer in the U.S. collegiate market um, with the Peach Belt Conference. We made that announcement earlier this week. They've also taken on our automated highlights product. And as a small conference in the U.S., they've got an incredibly small media team. Um, and, you know, the tools that are out today didn't give them the capabilities to automate everything that they need to do. So for the first time, they're going to be able to put out highlight videos, mini matches, home team and away team versions uh, that really produce this content and publish it out for the first time. And this opens up a massive opportunity for Linus in the U.S. collegiate market. That market is highly replicable. Uh, so by entering with the Peach Belt, we expect to be able to then penetrate further into that market, which has over 150 conferences, uh, most of them bigger than the Peach Belt, uh, and, and the ability to then go directly to over 1,100 sports uh, schools in the NCAA. Uh, so this, this automated highlights market is a tremendous existing market that we're jumping into to disrupt, both in terms of efficiency and in terms of cost. Next slide. 
the next thing that we're we're doing uh, with a number of our customers is putting that directly in the hands of fans. So rather than the internal media staff going in and searching and curating and putting together these highlights, we're going to put that directly in the hands of fans. So we've got experiences that are similar to like a YouTube-like experience with a search bar where you can type in for your favorite players' actions, type in Bruno Fernandez goals from 2023, and right away I've got a 10 or 15 minute stream of Bruno Fernandez's greatest moments from that year. Uh, we can do that in a TikTok style flickable experience as well. All of these have the ability to dive dynamically in, continue to, to search deeper and, and dynamically work through all of that content uh, and basically put an entire sports archive into a YouTube experience that the fan can then dive into, watch exactly what they want to watch. Next slide, Paul. Uh, and then at the core of the platform, what we provide is that search and video virtualization capability that any customer can then build any experience that they want. So once that content is virtualized and you have the ability to, to pull every little segment from your archive and, and put those back together any way you want, you can then build different experiences. Uh, so recently we launched with the North American Hockey League uh, and they built a custom application on our platform and went live with a service in just three weeks. It's allowed them to launch a premium subscription service, increase the subscription fees that they're getting from customers, and then they've taken this out to further customers beyond that as well. Uh, so the ability to, to build your own personalized experience, give that directly to fans uh, very quickly and easily, that's something that our customers are really valuing. Next slide, please. Uh, so then from a, a company revenue perspective, uh, we've done incredibly well over the last 12 months. So our most recent annual report, we reported that we uh, were just shy of half a million dollars in cash receipts. Um, that was an 82% growth year over year. Uh, and in our most recent 4C, we announced that the, the contracted revenue that we had in hand uh, bumps that up to 725k over the next 12 months, which is a 49% growth over the next year. Next slide. But that's really just the beginning. So again, we've achieved a, a locked in a 49% growth for uh, the next 12 months, uh, just in the in the first quarter of the year. Uh, but we're continuing to grow from there. So we've got you know multiple contracts that are still yet to generate revenue, uh, where we're still in deployment with those contracts. So we'll we'll definitely see that 725 growing. Uh, we then have multiple opportunities. Most of our customers only have one or two of our products, and we're we're working with them to launch multiple variations of those products. Uh, and all of our contracts also have variable revenue fees in them as well. So as our customers roll this out, drive revenue from advertising and sponsorship, we are participating in that as well. And then they, many of them contain master framework agreements that let them roll it out to multiple additional sports. We're then targeting customers across cricket, across football, across sports we've already done. Uh, targeting new sports, particularly American football. We see a, a tremendous opportunity in the American football market. Uh, targeting new geographies. So we've got our first customers in Asia, Europe, and the U.S. Uh, looking to expand into Latin America. India is a great market as well. Uh, the Middle East has a huge opportunity, and we've brought on board partners to help us expand there. Uh, and probably the biggest frontier for us is going to be moving into the broadcast space. So talking with TV and, and OTT streaming broadcasters to bring this uh, into their uh, user experiences. Uh, and then lastly, we're working with a number of technology companies that are going to help us to scale this. So at the moment, we're doing a lot of direct selling. But as we move and have validated our products and the value to our customers, we now have partnerships in play that are uh, going to help us scale that where these existing tech providers are embedding our technology into their solutions and bringing those out to multiple customers. So we, we expect great things this year in terms of our further growth uh, and really excited with the, the customer base that we brought on board in the last 12 months. That's it for now. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Joe. Much appreciated.
Dan, let's kick off. You, you touched on this earlier. Uh, you made it very clear that, uh, that the push into North America, North America is extremely important for Linus. And, you know, you, you mentioned that uh, you announced the you entered now into the college sports market. How significant is this deal? And do you feel it will now really hope open open doors to to other U.S. sports markets? Yeah, so the U.S. market is is the biggest sports market in the world. They generate over 40% of the, the revenue in the global sports market. Um, so if you just look at the, the, the massive scale of things like the NFL and Major League Baseball, um, it's it's next level in, in terms of what's available. Uh, but a lot of people outside of the U.S. don't really understand or recognize the size of the U.S. collegiate sports market, uh, which generates a massive amount of revenue as well. Um, so there's huge opportunity there with thousands of schools and, and hundreds of conferences that, that we now have access to. And we've always had trouble breaking into the U.S. because the, the question was always, OK, great, you've done Europe, you've done Asia, but who's done it locally? Uh, so in October, we launched our first service um, with the North American Hockey League uh, and now very quickly have jumped in and jumped into the uh, U.S. college sports market. So in the U.S. market, there's this follower kind of mentality. Once one person has done it, the, the, the dominoes tend to fall. Uh, so we've seen that by getting into one. We've now very quickly taken on our second. The, the third and fourth are expected very quickly as well. Uh, and the U.S. college market in particular is a massive opportunity because it's so highly repeatable. They follow what you know the others have done. And you also mentioned uh, uh, India is uh, is on your radar, and obviously we know how much the Indians love uh, love their cricket. Absolutely. So our our partnership and agreement with Cricket Australia uh, has has definitely targeted that audience, uh, but it's with Cricket Australia's content. Uh, so we're absolutely looking to, you know, go further into the cricket realm, uh, working with the different cricket federations around the world. But that's a massive target audience for all of those. Uh, so both with the federations and with the broadcasters uh, who have the rights to the cricket, uh, India is absolutely a top market for them. Uh, and we now have local representation that's uh, helping us to expand there. And look, we, we, we talked about as well, you know, the Cricket Australia contract is really starting to to to, to ramp up. Uh, how important is, is this contract to to to, to Linus uh, in the in the second half or into in 2024? Yeah, look, they've been a fantastic customer for us, uh, both from a revenue perspective and from a product development perspective. They're really pushing the boundaries in terms of how they use our product and you know what they're what they're looking to achieve with it. Uh, so we continue to grow with them. Uh, they're they're currently our largest customer in terms of revenue. Um, and, and we're continuing to expand with them. They started with our, our core um, content search and curation product, have added our automated highlights product, and, and you know, we hope to continue to expand with them. Uh, their input's been invaluable, and they've been really a great partner uh, in terms of uh, you know, driving our, our product development. And just to finish up, James, with, with your technology, obviously you're focusing on, on on the sports market. But is it my understanding this technology can be used in in, in other uh, other markets products? Yeah, hundred percent. So in the early days of the the company, when we were proving out the technology, we have test marketed the technology in different applications. So we've we've got products in the education space. Uh, the the sports product that we have can very easily move into the news segment, for example. And we've even done testing in the security and defense market where you can, uh, you know, take all of this CCTV footage and follow people as they, uh, you know, move about, you know, a particular city or uh, through uh, customs, for example, we can actually, you know, manipulate that video and present that. Uh, so we've proven those markets, we've proven the technology works in them. Um, but as a small company, we can only focus on kind of doing one thing properly and, and driving to a profitable position. Uh, so once we you know, get closer to that point, we will continue to look at adjacent markets, uh, particularly as we go into the broadcast market with the sports product. They're, they're now very quickly starting to ask about um, applying that technology into news. And as we enter the U.S. college sports market, uh, those customers are already asking about how they can use the same technology in the education space. So focused on sport at the moment, but we're already starting to get pulled into, you know, some of those adjacent areas as well and bring that technology back into those markets. I hear you. James, many thanks again for your time today. You have a great weekend. Thanks, Paul.